Alchemy is the former field of science dedicated to just being able to, to turn any material into gold. And of course, this is impossible. But um, it's interesting because fusion is actually a lot like alchemy. It offers very lofty promises, but as of right now, it's just an unproven technology. Now, as a nuclear engineering student at Texas A&M University, it is my responsibility to keep up with advancements in my field, um, such as nuclear fusion research. And the National Ignition Facility, or the NIF, and the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor Program, or the ITER program, are making advancements in the field of nuclear fusion. That are, these advancements are important because they could, if fusion were to become a reality, it could offer a solution to the climate crisis we currently face because it would offer clean, safe, affordable, and renewable energy. The work that, uh, excuse me, the uh, researchers into fusion, uh, fusion researchers must overcome three hurdles uh, before their research can continue. They must overcome the technological hurdle of being able to prove that it is possible to have a net output of energy in a fusion reactor. Until, up until now, all, we, we've never had a reaction that we put in, let, um, take in more energy out of than we put into it. The second hurdle we must, uh, researchers must overcome is a logistical hurdle that it deals with shortages in, uh, in fusion fuel. And the third uh, hurdle that researchers must overcome is a political hurdle. They must gain enough political support to receive the funding they need um, for fusion research to continue. So first I'm going to discuss the inter program in the NIF and what the research they're putting forth. Then I'm going to discuss, uh, explain the short, uh, how shortages uh, of nuclear fuel are affecting research. And third, I'm going to explain the importance of funding for nuclear fusion. Now, the first hurdle is a technological hurdle. And they, scientists must prove that it's possible to take a net output of energy from a controlled fusion reaction. Never been done before. Um, the main effort from the United States is being put forth at the National Ignition Facility. And there they have internal confinement fusion reactors. Now, according to Giovanni Verlini of the International Atomic Energy Agency, these reactors use internal shock waves and lasers to create the conditions needed for fusion. This is how it works. So, it's kind of like the opposite of a water dropping into, pond, uh, into a pond. So, as the water droplet goes down, it creates waves that proceed outward from the impact point. Uh, conversely, the, internal, the, the reactor is going to use shock waves. It's going to point shock waves to a center convergence point right there. And when the, when the shock waves reach the convergence, which at the convergence point is going to be where the nuclear fuel is, they're going to point lasers at the convergence point and give it enough heat to kick off a fusion reaction. And fusion needs is this extreme amount of heat because fusion normally just takes place only inside of stars, like our sun. That's where fusion comes from. But we're trying to recreate the environment on the inside of a star in a laboratory, which I think is pretty impressive. Now, the international effort in fusion research is known as the ITER program, and it's the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor Program, and it's designed in a, in a tokamak. Now, this basically just means that it's a reactor with an internal cavity in the shape of a donut or a torus, and the plasma, the fusion fuel, swirls around and around this reactor, getting more and more pressurized and more and more hot. And um, th this, this, is not a, this design has been implemented before, actually, in the JET reactor, or the Joint European Taurus reactor. It's very similar to the design of the ITER. The ITER is still being constructed right now. And recently, according to Nature Magazine, the JET reactor actually had a big breakthrough and it achieved a world record for energy um, output in a fusion reaction. It did not achieve a net positive ratio, but it was a record. And this is a good sign for the ITER because if... Because, because if the jet was able to achieve such favorable results, it's hoped that the big, d bigger design of the ITER will allow it to be more efficient and achieve net positive um, energy release. Now, research has come a long way since the days of the NIF and the jet when they were built in the previous century. But, you know, further research could actually be impacted by something, uh, research shortages. Resource shortages, excuse me. The second hurdle that a scientist must overcome is a logistical hurdle, and it has to do with the shortages of in a, a key ingredient in nuclear fuel, tritium. There's two, there's two ingredients in fuel, deuterium and tritium, and they're both isotopes of hydrogen, although tritium is the one that is elusive. According to Daniel Clary, a news editor for the Science Magazine, a news editor for Science Magazine with a degree in theoretical physics from New York University, efforts could be hampered into fusion research 
due to these shortages in tritium. Deuterium can be found in the oceans, but tritium has to be made in special reactors, and the most common form of these is the CANDU reactor. And these are fission reactors that produce tritium as a byproduct, a radioactive byproduct, because tritium is radioactive. It actually has a half-life of 12.3 years, which explains why it's so uncommon. And it's thought, and, and, and according to Clary, as these reactors are being taken offline, because a lot of the CANDU reactors are old, tritium shortages will only continue to dwindle. And there's only about 25 kilograms of this stuff um, out in the world today. Now, tritium shortages is a uniquely short-term issue for fusion because it's expected that fusion reactors in the future will be able to recover their own tritium and become and be self-sufficient. According to Shinshu, a PhD student at Southwestern Institute of Physics, this is actually key to the success of fusion. Without them being self-sufficient in tritium, it, it, they will. It, Fusion, well, excuse me, fusion would not be a viable power source. Now, Chu also states that blanket, uh, tritium blankets will be used to recover uh, the tritium. At the, they will be placed at the bottom of the tokamak, and tritium ejecta will just be collected by them and then put back into the system. Now, this will, this will make the reactor self-sufficient. And according to the ITER's website, they will actually incorporate tritium blankets into their design, although not until much later. While the resource, um, while this resource um, limitation is not insurmountable, it's compounded by the fact that fusion research receives does not receive enough funding. A third hurdle uh, scientists must grapple with is a is a lack of political support. They need, uh, excuse me. The third hurdle scientists must grapple with is they need to get enough political support to receive enough funding to solve the fusion to solve uh, new, the the problem of fusion in time uh, before tritium shortages hamper their efforts and before the impact on the climate is too great to reverse. Now the ITER program is probably the closest to achieving a net positive release of energy, uh, but it's not constructed yet and this is not proven, and it's already experiencing funding issues. According to David Kramer, a news editor at the American Institute of Physics, it experienced massive delays in price spikes even before its completion. Um, Kramer, uh, also, according to Kramer, in 2035 is when they plan to um, incorporate tritium blankets into the ITER's design. Now, this is much too late, and this is possibly too late because by this point, tritium shortages might already be crippling. Additionally, it does not show enough urgency with respect to the climate crisis we are facing today. Now, for any of this research to be valuable, quick breakthroughs need to be made, and, th and this is because Fusion would be useless if our climate was just completely ruined by the time it was realized. All right, in conclusion, scientists need to um, surmount the technological hurdle of proving that fusion is possible, and uh, they need to grapple with shortages of tritium and resources and find a solution to that, and they need to gain enough political backing to receive the funding they need in order to continue research. Now, the first problem, uh, now first, it, they need to prove that it's even possible to um, for fission to take place in a controlled environment, and then they need to work on um, ways to harvest the energy produced by uh, fusion. Next, they need to innovate a solution to um, the tritium shortages in time um, before tritium shortages become crippling. And finally, they need to find enough backing to solve the climate issue in a timely manner. Now, hopefully, nuclear turns out differently than alchemy. Alchemy, we know, is just an unobtainable paradigm. It's impossible to turn anything, just anything, into gold. But hopefully nuclear energy does not renege on the promises it made, and hopefully it will be a solution to the climate crisis we face. Thank you.